Hello there and welcome to Pork Central. Today we are going on a porcine pleasure cruise and we are going to make a great British classic that goes well with beer, cider and it's the great British pork pie. One of my viewers out there requested this video, you know who you are, alright the moose? How's it going? Well here it is, we're going to make a proper, proper pork pie. And we're going to start off by making a hot water pastry, we're going to use two fats, we've got butter and lard, I mean some people use all butter, some people all lard, but we're going to use you know half and half, so it's 100 grams of each. I've got 500 grams of plain flour, and there's two skinheads buried in the sand there, so that's the two eggs we need. And I've got 200 ml of water, and that's one of the first jobs we're going to do, we're going to get that going. And then for the filling, we've got a mixture of meats. We've got 250 grams of bacon, you can use streaky, it's just I've got some of this lovely home cured and it's smoked as well. I've got 250 grams of belly and I've got a kilo of shoulder. Now we're going to dice half, and we're going to mince half, I'm going to mince the belly and we're going to dice the bacon. And I'll show you what we're going to be doing because you've got to get it really small to add texture. I mean I know you could mince it all if you wanted to save time but you know you're making a, an artisan product here. A little bit more time you're going to have a top product. So I know it's a bit of a ball ache because they've got to be about 5 mil but it will pay dividends in the end. And obviously we're going to jazz up our meat. We've got some white pepper, black pepper, sage, thyme, some mace, some cayenne, salt. And then to finish off we're going to add the good important bit, the jelly. I've got a good chicken stock here and some gelatine to set it. Normally I would have a ham stock from one of my hams that I do but you know this was off the cuff I thought I need a pork pie, it's raining outside, it's comfort food, so let's do it. So first of all then I'm just going to show you what to do with the meat. So, what we're going to do then, I'm going to take half of that shoulder and I'm going to mince the one half on a coarse plate with my belly. The rest, i just cut some slices. You want to cut these quite thin if you can because you need to dice them really small and you know this is going to take a bit of time like I said you know don't worry about the fat in it we need the fat but you're looking at sizes like that so obviously when you're cutting that pie mixed in with that lovely minced meat you'll have these lovely chunks of prime pork so I'm sure you'd want to see me uh, dice all this so I'll get on with this and we'll get back and we'll start that pastry so uh, see you in about a week as you can see then I've diced my uh, shoulder of pork just finishing off this bacon like I said you know you can just mince all these ingredients but that bit of extra time that bit of love will make a far better product I mean I won't say it took a long time but even the skinhead's hair has grown back and a beard you know I've missed my vocation I should have been an artist anywho so what we got then, I've minced my belly, a few bits of bacon and that other half a shoulder. So in goes my diced bacon and then my diced shoulder. So as you can imagine now building that up, the textures when you're cutting that pie, you're going to have all those lovely chunks of meat and then it's going to be filled obviously with that mince. So we're going to give it a good mix and then we're going to add the spices and start building this beauty then and you know apart from that bit of dicing this really is simple because even the pastry is easy to do you know don't be daunted by it right let's get them uh, spices and herbs in so what we've got in that bowl so far then is we've got a teaspoon of salt a teaspoon of white pepper and a teaspoon of cracked black pepper I'm just going to put a couple of decent teaspoons of thyme in in go a couple of sage, let's give that a mix up. I'm also going to put in a pinch of mace and obviously pork pies are all about the pepperiness so I'm just going to add one cayenne pepper and that is our mix which we'll get in with our meat and we'll work all that in and then what I'm going to do then is we'll put that on chill and we can start making that pastry so you know you can make this the day before if you want to do it in half you know saving time so do this one day chill it 
make the pastry jobs are good out so I'll give that a mix up and we get on to the pastry so making this dough then couldn't be simpler 200 ml of water our mixture of fats 100 of lard 100 of butter so we get them in so they're melted and then our eggs let's get cracking straight into a bowl so we're just going to mix, whip our eggs up, simple as, and with our 500 grams of flour then, we're going to make a well in the middle, this is plain flour, we're going to put our eggs in, and then once our butter, lard and water have all come together, we should put that in there with a wooden spoon, mix it until we get a dough consistency. So our fats and our water have all melted, so what we're going to do, tip it into the centre, like I said, with a wooden spatula or spoon, just gently go around and mix it in until you get a dough consistency, and it won't take very long this. And once we reach that consistency, what we're going to do, just knead it very quickly and we'll get that in the fridge then for at least an hour to chill you know so we can work it because you'd have a right game on if you tried to work this while well, it was hot and that pretty much is how you get that fantastic crispy fatty base and sides of a gorgeous pork pie I mean you can't beat this combination you've got that lovely dough crust that pork pie mix in the middle all those meats and then that beautiful jelly it's a win-win situation As you can see then that comes together quite quickly so we do as much mixing as we can with the wooden spoon now just get your hands in move it around that bowl until it becomes smooth silky you know give it a little knead take out all your frustrations I shall keep working this and then it's just a waiting game then waiting for this to cool down and we can build this and get it in the oven so there's our lovely dough then looking nice and silky Cover it with some paper. Like I said, we let that rest for an hour. It's all gravy, baby. Okay, it's time to do the dough. Take it out. This is still a bit warm, this one. What I'm going to do is roughly take about a quarter for the lid. Put that to one side. And then going to roll this out because you should be able to mold this up the side of your cake tin which is what I'm using with a loose base I've got a 20 centimeter cake tin which I've liberally greased with some more lard you can never have too much lard in your life what I'm going to do I'm going to roll that up as I say this is a bit warm still And after a bit of fettling, the little beauty looks like that. So what we do then, we get our mix. Another final mix in the bowl. And then we... Get it in there. And as you can see now, that's starting to look lovely so all we need to do now then is get the lid on preheat the oven and cook it but don't that look good don't she look pretty anyhow let's do this lid get some more flour on 
So we save that quarter, get out of the film. So we want a lid about a centimetre thick, so just start rolling it out. Just putting a bit of flour on your pin will help. Just quarter turns. Should be able to get that lovely round shape, he says. So will she fit? Let's just check. Oh man, look at that. Almost professional. Just some water then, pastry brush. Just wet the edges. Put on our pastry. Join the two bits together. And then we'll crimp it. So before we crimp it then we'll just take off the excess. Quickly. We'll give it the old two finger jobby. I mean I ain't no baker but you know that looks to me pretty good. So it's nice and tightly together. Put a hole in the middle and I've preheated my oven to gas mark 4. If you look up there you'll see the conversion and we're going to put it in initially for 30 minutes. I'll get my tray. What a picture. So once you've had it in it to gas mark 4 for 30 minutes you turn the temperature down to gas mark 3 again the conversion up there you cook it for an hour and a quarter. Now we're halfway through that last cooking and then she's looking good. So we'll put that back in and just keep waiting baby. Right, this beauty has been in for an hour and a quarter. So what I'm going to do then is give it one more final glaze because I glazed it about 15 minutes ago. I mean you can if you want to risk it take it out the tin and glaze the sides. But This is such a big behemoth I'm not going to take the risk so I'll just glaze it on the top. It'll be nice and brown on the edges anyway. And just give it a final 15 minutes to set this glaze. And then we can let it cool. Then the next part is to jelly it. Looking good. Right then, that's the main part of the cooking done. So just to recap then, gas mark for 30 minutes. And gas mark 3 for an hour and a quarter. Then we glazed it and gave it another 15 minutes and as you can see it's come up, loosened away from the tin. So that's what will be happening inside there now that meat would have rendered a bit and they'll be left with a space which we're going to fill with jelly. So we've got to let that cool now to almost cold, slightly warm. But in the meantime we'll make up our jelly and once we let this cool we'll jelly it, let it set and try a bit. Right, we're on the final furlong of this mammoth pie mission. But, you know, the more love you put in these things, the more rewarding it is to eat. So I've got a really good quality chicken stock, like I said at the start. I normally got some ham stock lying around, which would have been even better. So I'm using 300 mils. Just going to put it into there. I just want to warm it through. I don't want to boil it, so I'm just going to take a bit of heat out. And you can use gelatin leaves now. If you wanted to use the, the leaf gelatin, use three. And I'm using this packet stuff. This is 12 grams. I've got 300 ml of stock there, so I want about half. But the beauty of preparing it this way is that you can check it, you know, because if it starts to stiffen up, you can always, you know, adjust it accordingly, just warm it back up, add a bit more. This is really sketchy, I should have weighed this, but hey, I live on the edge. So I reckon that's about half, that's what we're going to do, stir that in, you know, we'll let that cool, obviously when it cools it expands, and if I don't think the consistency is right to hold that pie, like I said, I'll add a bit more. So we'll check back on that, and that's how easy it is. Right, the moment of truth, let's get this gelatin, this stock in, I fashioned 
a little funnel so what you want to do is just pour a bit in obviously that meat has sunk away so just gently pour this in and just let it find its own way round your pie right I filled it up as much as I can with gelatin it didn't take a lot obviously that's a good thing because all the meat is round the edges so what we're going to do now is put this in the fridge for the final chill now I'm going to call this the Wizard of Oz pie why you may ask is somewhere over the rainbow way up high and that weighs a ton can't wait to cut into that well I couldn't wait any longer I know I put the gelatin in but you know I just I've just got to get into it so I've cut a bit the gelatin obviously hasn't set but just have a look at that beautiful pork pie what a stunning looking thing that is obviously eat a pork pie warm is a bit of a luxury let's move that over there let's get my plate just have a look at that if that's not a work of art I don't know what is so just take a bit of that bit of that be rude not to try this oh man oh yeah do you know what there's nothing else I can say about that that is a supreme product just do yourself a favour wait a little longer for your jelly to set and it would be I won't say better because that is brilliant so thanks for watching you know catch me on twitter at the scott reed project any questions feel free to ask thanks for watching i am gonna neck this now take care